All right, folks, we're at the top of page 7.14. We're going to completely switch gears here for the next few pages. So I want to think about this chemical reaction, nitrogen monoxide reacting with nitrogen monoxide to produce nitrogen gas and O2 gas. So what I want to think about is if I had some container, here's my nitrogen oxides, and I wanted these to react to produce this, imagine I have those in some container, what has to happen? Well, we know before these bonds have to break and these bonds are going to form. And so we can do that math now and figure that out. But what I want to think about right now is actually mechanically, how does that happen? Well, if I have a container with these molecules and they're bouncing around in there, nice animation, huh? They're bouncing around in there. What has to happen for this reaction to occur? Well, they have to hit, right? I mean, they can't just be sort of like at an eighth grade dance, they're at opposite ends of the room bouncing around. They've got to find each other and they've got to hit. So we would say, well, we have to have those two, the reactant particles, reactants must collide. We call this a collision theory. The, the particles have to hit each other to react. Well, based on that, we can based on this collision theory, we can sort of extrapolate. So the first thing we said was, well, there must be a collision. The particles must collide. Now in chemistry, we're often trying to think about, well, can I make this reaction happen faster or slower? It's a basis for herbicides. It's a basis for uh, many biological systems. So if I wanted to think about, well, what would give me, it's terrible, what would give me more collisions, more frequent collisions. Well, the first thing I could think about is a higher concentration, more particles. Higher concentration in the reaction vessel. If I just put more particles, they're going to hit each other more. The other thing I could do is, what if I had, here's my room and my particles are bouncing around. Well, what if I restricted the size of that room? What if I brought the walls in further and further and further? Well, what's happening is I could say, well, if I reduce the volume, there's more opportunities for them to hit. If they don't have as much space to bounce around, if I, instead of all this space, if I confine them to this little space, the chance of them colliding increases. So when I decrease the volume, maybe you know this, it's sort of intuitive. So well, you know what, you're really increasing the pressure. So more particles, higher concentration, smaller volume. And then here's something we haven't talked about. And this is, temperature is roughly speaking, the speed of the particles. It's more complicated than that, but that's a pretty good approximation. Well, if I'm at a low temperature and the particles are bouncing around, once in a while they hit each other. But if I increase the temperature, they're going crazy. I've increased the collision frequency. So I could say, well, I'll increase the temperature, which is an increase in the collision frequency. So just to get them to collide, I could say, well, I could put more particles in there. I could decrease the volume. I could make it a smaller space. Or I could increase the temperature. Well, that's great. So I'm doing all those things. And the particles are bouncing around faster in a smaller space. So I've got more particles hitting each other. But what's on the outside of each of these molecules? Well, it's electrons, right? There's a whole cloud of electrons around that thing. There's a whole cloud of electrons around this thing. So if the two particles come together slowly, they're going to just repel. 
They come together, the electrons start pushing, and then boom, they go away. No reaction happens. So these guys have got to strike each other with enough energy to overcome that electron-electron repulsion, allow these other bonds to form, and these other bonds to break. So they can't just, they've got to slam into each other so that I get that. Nice animation, huh? Okay, so we say, well, wait, this other criteria is there must be enough energy. Jeez, E-N-O-U-G-H, energy. That is, if they hit each other gently, no reaction happens. If they hit each other with enough energy, we get a reaction to happen. Well, the only way we can do that really is to speed up the particles. And now we know, oh, if you increase the temperature, you increase the energy. They, they're hitting each other harder. So we could say, okay, I've got all the particles in there. I've increased the temperature. They're hitting more frequently. But sometimes they hit each other and I don't get a reaction. What's going on here? Here's a productive reaction, productive collision. Here, non-productive collision. Well, they've got to have the right orientation. So there's our third criteria. We'll say um, proper orientation. That's just some kind of alignment. Proper orientation. Well, that's tricky to do. What I have to do is have something that encourages, rather than just sort of randomly striking each other, what I need to do is have something that might hold one in place or hold the other one in place or allow them to move in such a way that it increases the likelihood of them hitting in the right orientation. This can be done a couple of different ways, but primarily uh, it's a catalyst. Now in biology you say enzyme, it's the same thing. An enzyme is like a little factory that holds one molecule in place and somehow encourages the other one to come in at just the right angle. In fact, an enzyme may bend this bond so that it's about ready to break as this thing comes in. Um, catalyst in your car, the catalytic converter in the tailpipe of your car takes molecules that we want to react, in fact, nitrogen monoxide, and it gives them a surface to sort of skitter around on before they leave the exhaust pipe. And that gives them an opportunity, a better opportunity, that they'll hit with the right orientation. So this is our collision theory of reactions. They've got to hit. They have to hit with enough energy to overcome the electron-electron repulsion and break bonds. And they have to hit with the right orientation. If you don't get all three of those things happening, you don't get a chemical reaction. And here's the way we can speed it up. Put in more particles, increase the temperature, or add a catalyst or an enzyme. Now I'm going to stop here and direct you to another uh, ca uh, catalyst uh, demonstration that I would normally show in lecture on YouTube. And then we'll come back to the bottom of the page. So there it is. I'm going to put a link to that. All right, I'll see you after you see that, and we'll come back and do this.